Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to start off from the basic and create CRUD pages for our application. So by default, a lot of us ships with a user's table. And since we are, have already migrated our database, we're gonna start off by creating the CRUD operations, which is create, read, update, delete using Filament in just a few lines of code and a few minutes. So let's get started with that. Now, in order to first create these pages, uh, we need to use PHP Artisan. And if you just go ahead and type in PHP Artisan make, just hit enter, uh, Laravel will go ahead and actually give you the list of available commands. If you just scroll down, Filament actually has added a few extra commands for us. So we have Filament page, Filament panel, relationship manager, resource, team, a user, and widget. Now we're gonna be covering, I believe, all of these throughout the course. But for now, we're gonna be taking a look at a lot of will make filament resource. And what this will do is basically it will create the basic CRUD pages for a model on our database. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically I have already copied it. So I'm gonna say PHP artisan make filament resource. And then you need to give it a model on your application. So by default, we already have a model, which is gonna be the user model. Now you can go ahead and create your own migration and models but I'm gonna be using this one for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it user and hit enter. And Filmin will go ahead and create some new files for us. So let's take a look. Look under your app and Filament. There should be a new folder. And then now we have a new folder of resources. And inside that folder, we have a user and resource of PHP. And here we're gonna define everything regarding our database schema. And then we have a user, the resource page. We're not gonna be touching that for now. That's if you wanna customize the individual uh, CRUD pages. But let's hold on on the code first. Let's reload our page. And now you should have a new section called users. And we have a table here. Obviously, it's empty. We haven't defined our uh, database table schema yet. And then you can also see there is a new user. So we have both read and create. We also have the ability to edit. Obviously, we don't have we do have one record, which is the current admin. So we also have edit and we also have the ability to delete them as you guys can see. So we have the CRUD operations, but we can't see anything. So let's start off by actually doing that. So open up your user resource and these uh, resource files, basically it's gonna be your model name. Let's say you have a category, it's gonna be category resource, topic resource, whatever your model name is resource. This is gonna be the main file where you define your database schema and it's gonna control what you see on these CRUD pages, okay? So let's start off by first taking a look at this file. So it extends the resource class, uh, which is gonna be where majority of the functionality comes. Here we are defining the model that is gonna be controlling these uh, operations. So it's over here. By default, if you type the model name correctly, you don't need to touch these. Uh, here we are defining the navigation icon. So it's gonna be the icon at the left side, okay, top left. I'll show you guys how you can edit that in a second. But let's start off by first taking a look at these two methods, which is gonna be a form and table. Now the form is gonna be used to define the schema for your uh, create and update operations. Like right now, if, you guys do, if I go to user create page, we basically don't see anything. So inside this form function and specifically under the schema, is this is where you define what should be showed in this create page. And then if you scroll down under the table function, there are a few things here we have. So we have columns, filters, actions. For now, ignore all of these. Uh, this column section is where you actually define what should be showed inside this table here, okay? So let's start off by defining these and see how it works in action. So for the schema, uh, I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our user's migration here. So we have a name, we have an email, we have email verified ad and a password. Now when we are creating a new user, we only need the name, email and a password. So let's add those. Now Filament comes in with a bunch of uh, table resources so we can just go ahead and search for text input now my vs code is already recommending this to me but if you don't have it it's basically inside filament forms component text input and if you like you can just go ahead and do it this way okay but i'm going to be importing it because i don't want the text to be too long on the video and so that's the class and it comes with a make method and this will go ahead and create an input box for us so here Inside this make, you need to give it the column name on your database. So for us, for example, I have name and email. So I'm going to say name. And you can go ahead and create as many of these as you would like. So here I'm going to create another one for email. And I will also create another one for password. I'm just going to save it. Let's go back and take a look. 
and I'm going to click on new user. Now we have name, email, and password shown on here. So this is how you create basically forms using filament. And this is using the uh, form builder under the hood. Now, if you would like, you can also go ahead and give it some additional things such as a uh, require. This will make it so uh, it's a required field. So if I scroll back and I reload, we can see this kind of red star here that tells us, hey, this is a required field. Now, there are some additional helper methods you can call, such as email. This would make it so uh, Filament will ensure that it's an email and do email validation. So right now, if I add this, it says the email field must be a valid email address. So very basic validation. Uh, you can do the exact same thing for the password as well. So right now, if I'm using the password, we can obviously see it in plain text. We can go ahead and give you these text inputs a method of password and this will make it so that's a password input okay very nice so now if i reload the page and we try again now you can see this is actually kind of hidden okay so we can't see what we are typing in which is very nice now there are a few more things we have inside this text input so for example you can also go ahead and give it a select if you would like and it's going to, again, be inside filament, forms, components. So all of those are under the forms uh, namespace. And selects also work the exact same way. You can go ahead and make a new select. Now, right now, I don't really have anything to select here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it for name, just for t testing purposes. And then for the select, you can go ahead and give it, call a method of chain call a method called options. And this options accepts basically an associative array okay and you can give it all the options so here i can say uh, test equals test and then youtube another one so let's go ahead and do a reload and now we can see we have this name here which is a drop down okay very nice now the first one which is going to be uh, the key here is going to be what's stored on your database, okay? So it's going to be test. And then the second value is going to be what's shown to the user on the dropdown, as you guys can see. So here I can say test as name. And maybe here I go YouTube as name. And if I reload, you should be able to exactly distinguish them, right? So here this, we are seeing test as name. What's going to be stored on the database is going to be test. Same for YouTube. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to try to create a new user. Now, by default, if you're using uh, PHP 10, sorry, Laravel 10, you no longer need to handle uh, user password hashing. It's kind of already done as a hashed inside cast, so it will automatically hash the password, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and test this out and see if we are actually able to create a new user, okay? Uh, I'm going to disable these options for now, guys. We're just going to be using text input, so I'm going to go ahead, say test user, test at test.com. And I'm going to give it a super simple password, one, two, three, till eight. Click on create. And it's going to give us a success message of created. And if I go back to the users, now we have two rows. Now we still can't see these. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually add these tables. So inside our uh, table method, okay, so I'm going to for now close this forms. Inside this column is actually where we define what we show inside this table. And it works very similar to the forms, except the name for these classes are going to be different. So instead of text input, we have text column. Okay. So you guys can see almost all of the same inputs that you have. You should also have the column equivalent. And you can go ahead and call make. So it works exactly the same way. And then you need to give it the column name inside your da database. Okay. And you can again have as many of these as you would like. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for email. I'm even also going to go ahead and do one for ID, okay? So if we go ahead and we do a quick reload now, we should be able to see our ID, name, and email. Just like that, we have created our basic CRUD pages. So you can go ahead and edit these as well. And if you go on edit, you should be able to see the same uh, form that we have defined over here, okay? And I do have, I believe, my table plus over here. If I open up here, as you guys can see, I have two users on my table. Just like this and for some reason table plus doesn't have a, a zoom functionality if you guys know how to zoom please let me know in the comment section below but i have two users and again if i go back we can see these two users and my password was also hashed if you guys can take a look 
And that's because, again, because of the Laravel 10 new uh, casting of password hashing casting. So let's go ahead. I'm going to try to edit one of these users. I'm going to edit user number two. And instead of test user, I'm going to say uh, tutorial uh, user. We can even change the email. Now I can also go ahead and update the password. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Click on save changes. And it will go ahead and save the user for us. As you guys can see, it changed the tutorial user and test two. And the password hash should also change from whatever it is now. And if I reload, as you guys can see, the password hash also changed. Now, let's say, guys, you only want this password field to be only visible on read only on. So one thing you can do is you can go here on your password and go ahead and add a read only method. And this will basically make it by default, this is going to be fault true. So this will make it so it's read only. And if you edit the reload the page, I'm no longer able to actually type in here. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell. I'm trying to type. I'm not able to do it. As you can see, uh, it just selects it, but I'm not able to type. The same is also true on the create page. Now, maybe you only want it to be read only on a specific page. You can also go ahead and do that. Uh, this method accepts a set of uh, functions. You need to do read only on. And then this read only on accepts the pages you want it to be read only on. So here I can, for example, add in create. And if I reload the page, now I, it's read only on the create page. But if I only want it to be read only on edit, I change this to edit. I reload. Now I'm able to type the password in. If I go ahead and open up the edit page, it's back to read only, which is very nice. Now you also have another one called visibility. So you can go ahead and also do visible, okay, to basically control if it's visible or not. Obviously now it is visible. I can say false. And now we lose the password. So alternative, you can say visible on and control which pages this, you know, uh, form input is visible. So let's say I only want to show the password on the create page. I don't want to give the admin the ability to change the password on edit page. So you can just go ahead and add create over here. So if I go on the create page, we can see my password. If I go to the edit page, I'll lose the ability to see the password, which is very nice. So we have covered the very basics of it, guys. Now. What if you, for example, want an image upload? You want different types of columns. Now, I'm going to be covering those uh, slowly over the course of the series. However, if you go on the filament documentation and click on the form builder, you can see there are actually two sections, one form builder and one table builder. So these are separate packages or libraries. So the form builder is which is actually used to display the, you know, create and edit forms. And then the table builder is the package or the sub package used to show these tables. So if I click on the form builder, you can go ahead and do that yourself. And you scroll down on the sidebar, there is actually a section called fields. And here you can see all the supported fields that you can have on your forms. So, so far we use the simplest, which is going to be text input. And here you can see the uh, namespace for importing it and also how to use it. And if you scroll down, you can actually see all the available options. So, so far we use email and password. There is numeric, there is tell, there is URL. And if you guys like, I can make separate videos on each of these field lists. You can just let me know in the comment section below. And I'm going to be referring to them as we go throughout the series. But let's say, you know, you want to use a key value pair. Okay. So maybe you have a JSON field or something. Well, and I haven't covered this. So you can just go ahead, look at all the fields and maybe use the, you know, key value. Maybe you want a color picker. Okay. You can go ahead, come over here and take a look at the color picker. And I'll just show you guys how it might work in practice. Maybe I want to have a color instead of my name. I can just go ahead and add color picker. I'm going to import it to make name just like that. Okay. And I'm going to do a reload over here, open up edit. And now we have a color picker, All right. So it's very easy to use all of these different fields. Now, one thing you need to make sure guys is make sure you have your fillable set on your model. So things are saving properly. But other than that, it's very easy. Okay, to guys, last thing I want to cover is how to change this icon at the left sidebar over here. So you guys, I'm going to zoom in. You see this user. So I'm going to show you how you can change that. Let's go back to our uh, user resource. Go ahead and find this file. And if you remember, I mentioned this navigation icon, right? This is a property that controls this icon. And here we have hero icon O, that's for original, and then the icon name. So in order to change this, uh, filament by default uses hero icons. So go ahead on Google and just type in hero icon. And the website is heroicons.com. 
And so you should get something similar to this. It's just a set of SVG icons. And if you scroll down, it has three types. So it has a stroke outline version. Uh, there is a solid version and then there is like a mini version. So you can use any of these that you would like. So if you guys notice here, we are saying hero icon. So it means use hero icons. And then that O is for uh, outline. I said original, right? I don't know, outline. And then if you, for example, want solid, do S. And then if you want mini, do M, okay? So I'm going to use outline here. And then basically you can copy the name from any of these icons you like. So here I'm going to say users. And I'm going to copy this users here. And then replace anything after that O dash, okay? So this is how you change the icon for these. So I'm going to reload the page and then we get users. So uh, let's say I go ahead and I want, so this is the outline, right? Let's say I want the solid. I'm going to go ahead and replace this O with an S. Let's do a reload. And we get the filled in version. We can also do the exact same thing for the mini as well. Personally, I have never used the mini version, but that's the mini version. Okay. It actually looks very nice. So. Uh, you can go ahead and use any of these uh, icons I would like super easily. Let's say I want the battery icon. Just go ahead, copy that. Boom. And that's how you change icons inside Filament, guys. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to help you guys out or someone else from the community will do that. And that's it, guys. So that's how we create basic crowd operations with Filament. So as always, don't forget to smash the like button and hit subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos that I upload and I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.